Well, the fact of the matter is, is I know we laughed about that, but, you know, some of us were laughing, but there might have been some in here that was like, ugh, you know, talking to me, you know, and that's sad. Uh, praise the Lord. And the truth is, is that, uh, this, you say it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now would be a good time for everybody to sign on the table. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because there are many marriages right now that have one partner that is, I'm going to say, um, emotionally stopped up, while the other one is emotionally starving to death. And um, we have this. We have this concept of two people living together that really don't know each other. That's why it's so important to express our love to one another. Express your love. David, I love you. <laughs> Tell me you love me too. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Look at somebody right near you. Make sure if you're with a, a wife, or, you know, make sure it's okay. You just look at them and say, I love you. <laughs> don't look at somebody else's wife. All right? <laughs> She says, I am dark and beautiful, O women of Jerusalem, turned as the dark tents of Kedar, yes, even as the tents of Solomon. Don't look down on me with your fair city girls. Just because my complexion is so dark, the sun has burned my skin. My brothers were angry with me, and they sent me out to tend their vineyards in the hot sun. Now see what it has done to me. Why should we express it? It's needed to express ourselves. We, we've got to express ourselves. Now, I don't know how you would you would picture this young lady in um, in this in these scriptures, but for Solomon to write of a woman. Now, we expl we explained last week that Solomon had how many wives? Two men. Seven hundred wives and how many concubines? Three hundred. Three hundred. Okay. Now we're. We're not going to say that he spent quality time with each of them. We're just going to assume that he was just an immoral man and treated women just like, you know, it was no big deal. But the, the studies have shown that uh, Solomon disguised himself, seen this lady disguise himself as a shepherd and tried to win her over. So I'm assuming that if this woman has caught his attention, then she looks good. Okay? She's got to be a beautiful woman. Because he's, he's seen and been with so many women. What's another woman to him? But this woman, something's different about her. Just one of the... That's not nice. <laughs> something's different about this woman. I would say she's somewhere in between like an Einstein and a Miss America. Okay? She's a, she's a beautiful lady. And she's she's uh, she's got it going on. She she can hold her own when it comes to looks. Um, but it raises the point that uh, everyone needs to hear tonight that we have to have love expressed to us because it says here. It says, look at this one. She says, um, "I am dark but lovely." In other words, she's saying, "I've got." I've been working outside. Back in those days, it wasn't, it wasn't a good thing. Everybody's laying in tan beds now. Everybody wants dark skin. Well, in, in Western countries right now, uh, it's still a custom to where if you have dark skin, that it's not a good thing. They want you to be the fair-skinned woman because the dark-skinned woman shows a lower level of economy because they have to work outside. I ain't talking about that, Lucretia. Don't you be the comment. Lucretia back here just, uh-uh, uh-uh. Girl. 
I'm talking about tanging, dog. Right? But it showed the, the, the work that they had to put in. They was out in the sun all day and they worked hard. But the fair-skinned women, they were the ones that sat up in the room all day. They were the ones that were rich. They were the ones. And, and like many others, she's pointing down at herself. She's like, look at my dark skin. Look, look, I, I, I'm ashamed of it. Look what I'm having to go through. And like so many others, there's things about herself that she's insecure about. 